Hey, I hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to get to learn a little bit more about varistors, what they are, how they function, and how they're tested. Here we have a little image of varistors. They can sometimes look like capacitors, so people might get confused, but this is the general image that you would see. First of all, what is a varistor? The name is a mix of variable and resistor. And here we should know that there are different types of resistors. There are ones that change manually, like potentiometers that can go up and down. And then there's a second type, which are sensitive to physical factors. For example, the temperature or the voltage, which is our case right here with varistors. Which is why they're also known by the name VDR, voltage dependent resistor. And they have non-ohmic characteristics where we have this equation, I is the current, K is a constant, V is the voltage, and alpha here is a little coefficient, which would usually be 1 if we had a normal resistor. But in our case, it's not 1, which is why with varistors, there's this curve. Whereas usually with a normal resistor, it would be a straight line because alpha would be 1. Therefore, they come under the nonlinear type of resistors. So it's a curve. And this is the general symbol of a varistor. So, how does it work? A varistor is an electronic component that acts as a shock absorber, protecting devices from harmful power surges. So for example, when the voltage goes up suddenly like this, the varistor would come in and do its job. The varistor normally having a very high resistance, as we can see here, the resistance is very high, it responds to the voltage spike by absorbing its energy with a very low resistance. So as soon as there is a voltage spike, the resistance would go down because the voltage has gone up here. And this will blow the equipment's fuse but protect the expensive electronics. We'll talk about the fuse later on, but the main idea is that varistors protect the electronic device. A varistor that's received a very strong electric volt will remain at low resistance. Here we can see the varistor's voltage current characteristics. And it is bidirectional since we can see that it functions on both the first and the third quadrant, which makes it suitable to connect to both DC and AC sources. Moving on to how to connect a varistor, let's say this is our device and this is our source. Varistors should be connected with both leads directly to the source with an additional fuse to protect it. So in a usual case, when the resistance of the varistor is high, the circuit would just go like that, as usual. But when there is a voltage spike, the resistance would go down, therefore leading to a short circuit, which would then go like that instead. And usually, one of the wires here would burn, so instead of letting one of the wires burn, we would connect a fuse to one of them, so either this one or this one and therefore the fuse would burn instead of the varistor. This is a burnt fuse, which you could easily tell is burnt since it's disconnected and you can see that it's discolored as well. And this is a burnt varistor, which in general we could tell whether it's burnt or not because it would also be discolored, but sometimes we don't know and we would have to test it. If you think that a varistor is destroyed, you'll have to test it. To do so, first of all, you'll have to disconnect the electronic equipment and then desoldier at least one of the varistor's leads, so at least one side of it, and remove it from the circuit to measure its resistance. Then, you'll have to turn the multimeter on and set it to read at least times 1000 ohms and connect both of the leads of the varistor to the multimeter. If it reads nearly infinite resistance, then the varistor is still good, but if it reads very low resistance, then the varistor is blown. And then we're going to resoldier the varistor if it's still good, and if it's blown, we're going to have to disconnect it and resoldier another one that has the same rating in its place. Here are some images of what it would look like if the resistance was infinite. So here we have it at 200 mega ohms, and uh, we can see that it's infinite, and in this case, we're going to keep on using our varistor. But here we have another one that had the exact same rating and it gave us a very low resistance, not even 40 ohms, so that would have to be changed. Hopefully what you've learned is that varistors are used in sensitive electronic circuits to ensure that if the voltage does suddenly exceed a pre-limited value, the varistor will effectively become a short circuit to protect the circuit from excessive voltage and they are able to withstand peak currents of hundreds of amperes as we've seen 
previously with the voltage spikes.